Given an integer array sorted in non-decreasing order and the number target, return true if and only if this target number is a majority element. How would you do that? That's about this video. Let's get into it. Hi everyone, this is Steve here. Today we are going through another lead code problem, 1150. Check if a number is majority element in a sorted array. This is labeled as an easy question, and it truly it is um, truly it is easy. But let's um, quickly go through this. The reason it is easy is that we need to figure out a good, smart, and efficient way to uh, solve this problem. Let's take a look. Given an array nums in non-decreasing order, meaning every element in this array is non-decreasing. It's it's either the element on the right is greater than the one on the left, or at least equal. And the number target return true if and only if target is a majority element. Okay, let's take a look at the definition of majority element. A majority element is an element that appears more than half of the times in an array of length n. So n divided by two is meaning half. If there are ten elements in this, so for example here, example one, the array length is five. Nine divided by two is four. Right, integer division in um, programming it's four so value five appears five times which is five greater than four so five is a majority element that's what it means meaning one element needs to appear at least more than half of the array length okay that's the definition numbers okay so the, um, let's take a look at an example two 10 100 101 and 102 target is 101 it is false why because there are four elements total in this array. Four divided by two is two. And in order to be qualified as a majority element, it needs to be appearing more than twice. But 101 appears only two times, right? So it needs to be at least three times. So that's why it's returning false. Now let's think about how we can solve this problem. A very clear or very awesome solution is that since this array is sorted in non-decreasing order, we can take full advantage of this feature of this array. What we can do is that we can either find the very first element of the very first occurrence of the target element in this given array, or we can find the very last occurrence of this target element in this array. Right? So here we can find the very first one, we can find the very first occurrence of this target element in this array what we can do afterwards is that we can plus plus half of the array length and then check if the current index the first occurrence plus the half of the array length check if that number still is equal to target right and, and even before that we need to check whether the first occurrence index plus half of the array length is that still within the array boundary it could be it could be it go out of the array boundary right if it goes out of the array boundary then that means there is no such an element that qualifies to be a majority element easy as that or the other way is that we can find the last occurrence of this target number in the in this current array and then we'll just minus half of the array length and check if if the uh, last occurrence minus the half of the array length is still within the array boundary or it doesn't go in go to even left of the zero index that's the algorithm i hope that makes sense if that's the case we can put that into code so first we can of course we're going to use binary search which is going to give us o log n time complexity because this array is in none is in sort of non-decreasing order so we can use binary search to find the first or the last occurrence of the target number in this given array and then we'll just plus or minus half of the array length check first if that is still within an array boundary okay if it is still within the array boundary we're going to check whether that number in that index still equals to target if that is the case we we'll just return true that means we find such um, this given target is a valid majority number in this given array right that's it let's put that into code first we'll write a 
move this on this side. Um, uh, first, call it first index. Find the research nums target. So what we'll do here is binary search. We'll quickly implement binary search. Notice this binary search is to find the first, okay, let's just call it, we'll find the first occurrence of such a target number in this given array. Nums and target. Okay. Two pointers, technique, very classic and very practical as well. Left starts from the very left. Right starts from nums land minus one. Then while left is smaller than or equal to right, we'll do emit left plus right minus left divided by two. Check if nums emit is smaller than target, which means we need to uh, assign mid plus one to left, else if nums mid greater than or equal to target. In this case, nums mid is greater than or equal to target. What we'll do is we'll just assign mid to right. And in the end, we can just return left. That means we find the first occurrence of this array of um, the first occurrence of this target number in this array. And then what we will do is that um, we'll check what we'll do is that okay, last index. What we'll do is first index plus nums length divided by two. And then what, what we'll return is that we can return if last index still is within the boundary of array length and nums last index equals to target. That's it. That's the entire algorithm. I hope it still makes sense. So what we have implemented is that we have first used binary search, which is going, going to give us O log n time complexity to find the very first occurrence on the very left end, possibly, of the target value in this given array. And then we plus that with half of the array length because in order for this target element to be qualified as a majority element of this array, it needs to appear at least half of the array times. So we plus that. And then we check whether this last index is still within the boundary of the array. And also, if that is the case, we'll check if that value is still equals to target. If that is the case, Okay, then we can return true. If any one of these two don't hold, then we can just return false. Now let's take a look. Why do we do it this way? This is not a very typical binary search because in, bi in very standard classic binary search, what we do is we check whether the mid, we calculate the mid index, whether the mid index is smaller than the target, then we do this. If the Then we check whether the mid element is greater than target, right? And then we do mid minus one assign that to right and then we have another else which means nums mid equals to target that means we find such a number but in this case what we do is that remember what i said is there are either two ways either we find the very first occurrence of the target number in this array or we find the very last occurrence of this target number in this array so what we're doing is the former one we're trying to find the first occurrence of this target number in this given array so we try to shrink everything. We try to move towards the left end. That's why we say whenever we find the nums mid is greater than all equal to a target. That means, for example, so first here, there are nine elements total, which means from zero to eight. So zero plus eight divided by two, that is four. Zero, one, two, three, four. So this is the first mid element that we're going to find. So we find that nums mid is greater than or equal to five. Then we assign mid to right. So at this point, right becomes four, right? So we'll keep shrinking. So first, at first right is here, and then right becomes here. We keep shrinking. Whenever we find the element that equals to target value, 
will keep moving it towards the left, towards the left, towards the left. So the array is shrinking. First, that's the beginning and end of the current array. And then we move the right end. We keep moving. We keep moving both ends, right and left, towards the very first occurrence of this possible index, of this possible element that appears in this array. That's why we have nums mid greater than or equal to target. As long as the left index is is exactly smaller than right, then we'll just keep doing this until we find, oh, whenever left equals to right, we'll just break out. That means we find the very first index of this target number that appears in this array. Then we can just return. That's the algorithm. I hope that all makes sense. Uh, now let's hit submit. All right, accept it. 100%. Uh, basically, because we use binary search here, it's going to be guaranteed to be very, very fast. Okay, let's talk about time complexity. Time complexity is going to be O log n. n is the length of the array of the given array nums. Uh, space complexity is just O1. We're not using any n, any extra space. That um, very easy and straightforward. The key here is that. We need to find the first or last occurrence of this array, and then we can just plus or minus half of the array length and then check. Easy as that. I hope you, this uh, video makes sense, and uh, I'm improving to how to explain and go through uh, new code problems. If you like this video, please do me a favor and hit the like button. That's going to mean a lot to me, and I really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and tap the little bell notification so that you're not going to miss out on anything. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys in the next video.